Hey, y'all. We're back at it with episode 17 here. We're going to call this one Side Piece or No Piece, and we have two, two guest appearances, returning guest appearances. One is Shock and Gage. So you've got me, Lily Lavender, and Jaybird over here. Jaybird's going to start us off. So the biggest establishment that we've been working on all morning has been fantastic is the difference between a mistress, a concubine, and a side piece. And uh, for those of you who know, and if you're in the older generations like myself and my colleagues right here, uh, you know the difference is uh, some, some of you guys get perks and you understand your role, and some of you don't, and you get no perks at all. So we've been kind of establishing this a little bit. We've been arguing all morning. We probably should have recorded a couple hours earlier. We, but we've been on a rant. This has been a hot topic for the rest of us. Love, love coffee. Uh, we're we're amped up and we're ready to go. But uh, so we've uh, we've been talking all morning about like different roles and different establishments about. Uh, you know the differences between a mistress now well, the biggest thing that we've been able to agree on is that a mistress or a concubine has perks uh, everybody yeah huge perks so there's a huge a role to be played so don't ask questions don't get in the middle of my relationship don't invade uh but i get my rent paid for i got my bills paid for i get free dinners and i live a high life on a relationship that i don't really have to put into but i influence the idea of being a mistress but it doesn't sound too bad. Like, uh, no, no, no. I mean, <laughs> no, it doesn't sound bad at all. Well, like I said, all this is based on a respect level. You know, a mistress is more, she doesn't want to be called a side piece. She's earned the right not to be called a side piece. I mean, she she doesn't call your house and blow it up. She's not talking shit about your wife or you know, whatever situation you got going on. She understands her role. She understands what she does because she's established that that's what she wants to be. A side piece doesn't know what she wants to be. She just knows she wants to be something. Well, and we were discussing that earlier between a side piece. You know, side piece has got this weird mentality, this one mindset that she can get involved with this guy that she likes, right? And is willing to fold and willing to break you know, break bread into a situation and fit herself into a crevice in a relationship, hoping for something better out of this relationship. Meaning a side piece is hoping for that number one wife spot. Now, we have conflicting spots, uh, th thoughts about the whole situation. Now, if you're, <laughs> if you're a side piece, you're hoping for that number one spot. That's great. Keep fighting for it. But here, it won't happen. Perfect example. Okay, this shit happened to me last night. I had a couple come into the bar. Gage, you already know. And um, I, st I happened to start an argument between the two, and I didn't even know what the hell I did. I was just working. I was their bartender. She walked into work and thought she was hot. That was a problem. Oh, man. Oh, must be nice. man. I tell women, you what. Men and women, you get hit on by I got, yeah, I did. I got hit on by the both of them. Shocker. <laughs> At the end, she was telling her man that if you like her so much, go home with her. And I was like, he wait a second. He, he, he did. He overdid it. So we're just going to call him Mr. Poker Dealer. Because <laughs> he's a poker dealer. And she's a local. <laughs> but this is, this, this poker dealer is her side piece. Okay. okay. Oh, her side piece. Her side piece. I like it. I like it. Uh-huh. Please. Oh, man. He's the one that's making more money than she is, but she paid for the whole night. He didn't have to worry about a damn thing. That's how I knew that he was a side piece. She paid the whole night. And um, on top of that, she was the one who was going to tip me. And I called it from the moment they sat down at my bar. I knew who was going to pay and who was going to tip. So I did nothing but cater to her. And he was like, why are you being so nice to her? And I was like, because... That's where the bread is getting buttered at. 100%. Nine times out of ten, we already know who's going to leave the money behind. And it's usually... And, uh, We've been, we've been kind of going back and forth on this on dominating uh, like dominating men or assertive men or people yeah. or dudes that like take control of those situations and ones that are like uh, that just kind of I, I hate saying the word simp that's just such a young yeah. I mean, we don't have to use that word we can use other words but that, 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 that well what you call it like a bitch ass nigga like, yeah. so that's what I probably was going to say so like <laughs> like yeah. Yeah, if we get down to brass taxes, yeah, you a bitch ass nigga. That's what you is. And, you know. So coming down to the situation, there's nothing wrong with catering and taking care of your lady. There's nothing wrong with that. that that's a certain amount of respect. Like I will still pay the bill, and I will fight this bill, pay the bill, or we'll make an agreement. We do that all the time. We fight over the bill. Yeah. We fight 
fight over who opens the door for one another, yeah. you know, and like that's just old school stuff for me. For me, it kind of like if a woman's trying to open the door for me, it almost makes me like nauseous, not or just skittish, like like oh, you just kind of kind of hurt me in a different way. I feel like you're just trying to neuter. Someone's about to strip your manhood. Yeah. Uh, I really feel like I'm being neutered. Yeah. Let, me, uh, yeah. Let me hold that. Let me hold that. Yeah. So yeah. So if my job as a man is to tip the bill, open the door, and make you feel like you know, make you feel that part. But that's not, in my opinion, that's not simping. I'm not doing everything. No, 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 no. That's not simping. Simping is when you're over catering for people. Yeah. You're you're not only paying the bill. You're not only doing. You're doing all that. You 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 drove there. You are a yeah. thousand yeah. percent yeah. submissive. Yeah. 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 That's what it is. Yeah. Nobody wants to be the man of being submissive in a relationship. So for these dudes, these. Bitch ass niggas. <laughs> no. Oh wait, sorry, sorry guys. There's... Yeah, sorry guys, we're still getting coffee out here. But like, so if you're if you're giving everything into a relationship, you pay like you yeah you you cater, you do the laundry, you do all the dishes, whatever. It's not a mutual relationship, and you're not taking care of your assertiveness. Like as a man on those on those fronts, those are all important things. I mean, okay, so here's what we say. But another level to this is when you do not do it, as long as the roles are defined, and you're and you're okay with that, and she's okay, and some mutual respect about that. Then that's that's cool. It it's all about a mutual respect and and knowing your part. Hey, this is what I'm better at than you. You better than me at this. Let's do this. Let's do that. You know that's funny. So my second ex-wife, second, yeah, you didn't hear it. <laughs> I did say that. So second ex-wife. My, uh, so I was teaching my daughter. Here's my here's my thing about my daughter. I've taught my daughter how to fight. I've taught her how to mow the yard. I've taught her how to weed eat. I've told her how to change the oil in her car and change her tires. Going. I, uh, this is my role as a father is to make sure that she is not dependent on anybody in life. So, like, especially, as, uh, a man. especially a man. She will never look up and to be dependent on a man. And if she has to, she'll call dad. Like, that, that, that's all I want from her is, like, if, if she's in struggle, that's my job as a dad. She'll call me. But. I was teaching. I was teaching my kid how to do uh, do an oil change on the car one day, and my second ex-wife looked over. She's like, "When are you going to teach me how to do that?" I said, "I'm not." And she looked at me. She was like, "Why wouldn't you ever do that?" I was like, "I'm teaching my daughter how to do all this stuff on her own." I was like, "You, on the other hand, I'm not trying to teach you how to take my role as a man. Like, this is this is my role. This is mine. This belongs to me." You know, if things break down in the house, you don't go and fix it. And she used to do that. We used to fight over stuff like that. She would find ways, like her her dad used to work in HVAC and stuff. So air, air condition break, she'd she'd fix it. Yeah, she'd fix it when I was like when I'd be at work. I, our biggest fights, a lot of our biggest fights, was her trying to assert dominance in certain situations that clearly belong to me. Now, I may be old school, and I may be. We, we, I don't even call it being old school. It's just God. What do you call that? It's, it's him again, like we talked about. Establishing roles in a relationship up front and getting all this stuff squared is definitely important. Now, uh, we, we've discussed at length about, like, if you're entering relationships or being in one, is if you, if you establish a certain level, uh, amount of respect between, uh, between you and your significant other. Yeah. Yeah. You let them know ahead of time, like, listen, this is me. I'm not changing me that's for right. anybody. That's right. Like, that's the most important thing that you can be doing in a relationship and, in, and there's no blind side no there's no, no, no there's no misconceptions right. about situations that's, right. that's, that's all right. important that's right so when you're fighting in a, fighting in a relationship all that stuff you get like you lay everything out on the card like you lay everything yeah, yeah. Out. like in they relationships that i get into now i make it very clear mm -hmm. like listen i'm a huge flirt and i play around or whatever but if you're with me you're with me yeah like I, if i'm with you i'm with you i'm yeah. not gonna like i'm yeah. not gonna play around with that fact but that's dating that's dating that's dating that's, that's old sure. school dating that's apparently school. that's not yeah. Now, no, no, and here's uh, here's the kicker about now. It's just, it's just, it's all over the place. Now. Yeah, it's yeah, you like don't, I don't even know what it is. Having, we were talking yeah. about that. People are over catering to whole situations, giving, giving random women everything yeah, they can possibly want. That and like uh, including the, like the shirt off your back and mm -hmm. and, and, and and pushing too far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you and people now are like, people now are losing themselves mm -hmm. trying to cater to somebody else. And that's mm -hmm. crazy. To me. Well, that's why I think people are more accepting of the role of side chick. Yeah. Yeah. Now? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. all of a sudden, like, they don't have to worry about relationships or anything, and if they get it, they get it. Yeah. Like, they, they want up. Or they can move on to the next yeah, one. on to the next one. Yeah, yeah, everything's instant. Everything's fast. Nobody, nobody has time to put the time in that we learned when we were growing up, yeah. I guess. Well, and we were, we were discussing with Gage earlier about how, like, how to 
start off as like just casual relationship, mm -hmm. like having a good time, hanging going out, out and, like, yeah. and hanging out yeah. and, and yeah. working your way. Because relationships will work. Like and mm -hmm. establishing boundaries are hard because mm -hmm. at the same time you have to tell somebody and tell them straight, which some people like enjoy that thoroughly. Mm -hmm. Like I ain't gonna lie, I, enjoy that I feel thoroughly. like it's a I feel like it's a flex to come out and be like, listen, this is how I am. I'm not doing. I like if you can't handle it, this ain't what we're doing. And, it's, and you say it in a way you're not being you're not being mean or over the top. You're saying, listen, as the person I am today, where I am in my life, this is what I can offer you. Mm -hmm. Now you can accept that, or you can say, you know, I, I'm I'm not with that. But don't tell me you couldn't accept it, and then we argue every day, and, and you know we fight. So it, it it also has to deal with the fact that there's people out there that want a relationship so bad mm -hmm. they're willing to do anything to get into a relationship without knowing or understanding why they want one in the first place. I want I was wanting to hit on this topic earlier, but you all you you all had great things going. I yeah, I just you know, I didn't want to jump in and intrude, but it was uh just a video I watched the other day and it's like the basis of like men and they're like I mean it's like built into us to be a protector, to do these things. So like when you take that from us, you're taking away like stuff that's good for us like that's good for the soul like i mean helping our family protecting our family that's what men are made for and that's what we want to do and that's what we want so i mean we might get impatient and jump into relationships but really that's just because we have a lot of love and we just got it built up inside of us so then, so then what about those females that are trying to portray that they don't need a man so they can easily take that role away from any man but they still want a relationship with a man so here's all right we're gonna i'm gonna bounce back and forth real quick real nice so i was talking to my mom not too long ago and uh and I, so no i i it's not a, it's no flex or nothing this is just the way this is the way she was uh, she's been she's with she's been with my dad for 20 22 years mm -hmm. like and there's days they're just mean to each other like the, the, the snide comments and like they're just dull like they're just mean to each other there's days they don't even talk to each other mm -hmm. and there's days that like they flirt and they play on and carry on and it's just a roller coaster ride but they've been together for two, 22 years rock solid and I was like and we were having a, quite a big discussion about random people like people that we admire mm -hmm. and you know the first ones that came to her mind which caught me off guard I could say I could see my dad saying it but her it kind of caught me off guard. She's a huge fan of Sam Elliott, Clint Eastwood. Oh, oh you're good. So, you. He, uh, like, all the bigs, like, all the ones that you would find in the mountains surviving on nothing but, like, bread and water. Or, like, or the hunting and hunting knife. Or, uh, so, like, um, you find these guys that just, and they don't cater to anybody. Like, and when you get that one, and you watch these movies where they get that one hint of emotion out of somebody, the, the women in those roles know they have accomplished something yeah. great yeah. because yeah. you know they don't get the crack yeah it's hard enough to crack we've discussed that it's a huge flex to hold yourself up to a higher standard and setting boundaries like either, either in the beginning of a relationship or in the middle of one like you just lay down I'm not saying lay down the law but just mm. let people know who you where you're at what you're yeah. about yeah that's, uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with that if I don't let you know who I am then who am I right. in this relationship as far as this relationship goes because you've been it is these days and times you hear it's whatever or, you know, whatever more than anything. What does whatever mean, though? It does not define a thing. So you're just rolling down the hill, not knowing where you're going. Yeah, you're telling me that yeah, no clarity yeah, at all. Yeah. yeah, you're telling me that you're willing to accommodate any situation that I throw at you. You don't know what that is. You don't know what that means. Right. I could I could be into some of the weirdest, kinkiest mm -hmm. stuff and you're just going to have to bear with it or get mad. Because you, you said you could well, do that. Was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's no backing out now. You're just you're stuck. With the older generations, this is what I'm about. This is who I am. Either love me or leave me alone. Mm -hmm. There's no middle ground in this. There's just not. Yeah. You are who you are. We love the people we love. We and, and we and we done with the people we done with. That, that's just the way it is. And we get along with everybody at, and yeah. at the same you, time. We're civil. You're yeah. civil to everybody. You're again. This is all based on respect. If you don't build your house of cards on respect, it'll fall quicker than anything. Well, we were discussing that earlier. So, like, if I take if I take time for you, mm -hmm. like, and you stand me up, don't like most of most of the time, it really takes a like it would have to take a big change up for me. Like, if you stand me up, like, there's got to be some work that comes into like getting a second uh, like, getting a second yeah. opportunity. Yeah. But like like I said, dude, usually if you stand me up, like you're pretty much done for the most mm -hmm. part, yeah, you know, yeah. because because I myself has taken time out for you. 
LA, and we all live extremely busy lifestyles. We're bartenders. You run a food truck. We work weekends. We work nights. We work, we have a nightlife, and like in anything. And my days off usually goes either to our project, like on our other businesses or whatever, or our, or things that we have to do. We like I've got a family at home that I got to take care of, and then we also have businesses that we cater to. And then that one thread, maybe three or four hours that we have to ourselves, we spend it usually together. Yeah. You know, talking about the week that we've just been busting through. So. So for me to actually take time out of my day, that's valuable to me. Like that's gold. That's time that I'll never get back. And people talk, you know, somebody can hear this and be like, oh, well, you, you know, you're acting like your time is a lot. It is. It is. It's very much a lot. It's like gold. Time oh, yeah. is gold. Time is money. They say that. Right. Not only when you're making it or when you're working, when you're off and you're trying to figure out and do things with your time because it's so limited. Yeah. Yeah, we're not promised. We're not promised tomorrow. I know that sounds like an old phrase or whatever, but it, it's a true thing. Like, uh, I mean, to give up time for somebody else is a huge, like, it's a huge cut down if you waste it. Like, if you, yeah, and, that, and that's the thing that I've been harping on, like, people that are younger in this younger generation. They, they don't value that time. They don't value what's important to you. So if you, if you take the time, you flirt with me or whatever, and you play around or whatever, we set a date. I have taken time to, like, to make plans with you taking time to make like efforts to accommodate certain situations and you just ditch like you gotta move stuff around to make it work and you're taking time away from the other people in your life that you would usually spend that time with whether it be us or someone else and then that's when that's why i always say that there's so many selfish people in this world like we understand that our time is important and we're bringing somebody else into this whatever share it with us but they're more selfish than we are yeah. when they just start to back out out of nowhere yeah. like we made these plans well and not only that like i understand i understand having the mindset like dang i'm tired i don't know if i have it in me to go and do all these things but like i said if somebody called me and, and like we made these plans i will dedicate to those plans like it, it doesn't matter how i feel it doesn't matter how like how you know if i'm miserable i'll let them know like listen i'm just not quite feeling it i might be off my game but you can count on me to be there yeah. yeah it's really that simple and it, either they'll understand Stand and be like, listen, you know, it's not that big a deal, and like, and let you cop out, or like, they'll be like, listen, I really appreciate you coming out and yeah. making the effort, yeah. and that speaks more volumes to me than just ditching. Exactly. Yeah. Heard that. Heard like, that. All that stuff is important, and that's what younger generations don't quite grasp just yet is that uh, time, like time in a relationship, is a 50-50 split. A fifty-fifty split. Just like anything else in a relationship, like if I'm the first one to text every single time, I'm gonna get burned out. Yeah. Like, I'm going to get tired really well, quick. You're going to start to feel that, you, that you're not as important to them as they are you. And, again, that is more of a worse feeling than anything. If you are seeing someone and you start to feel that thing where you're more into it, it starts to slip to 60, 40, or 70, 30, you're going to get out of that. Yeah. You, or you should get out of that. And all of a sudden, your valuables, your value in the relationship is not worth putting it into. And that's the problem with being a side chick nowadays is you're fighting for this little inkling of emotion for a role that really doesn't belong to you. And let's take a little bit deeper is uh so let's say that dude gives you the time of day be like you know what you're right i want to like i want to drop my whole relationship and give you exactly what you want but you don't want that finally got it well, that's a red flag. yeah of course well, <laughs> well and it, yeah it's a red, red flag all to itself because like if it was so easy to drop somebody that i was completely loyal well i, I say completely loyal while i'm saying side chick it's a little weird but like in this <laughs> realm that we're talking about yes we understand yeah yeah, yeah. But, like, but in this scenario in particular like i've been in a relationship with this one person and i've put in the work and whatever and you're just a side chick but i dropped everything that i put in all this effort into to be with you specifically What's to say that I won't do it to the next side chick that comes in your life? Oh, no, it's no question. You will do it because if, if that side chick is not smart enough to know that, then she's she's a permanent side chick forever, forever. for everyone, not just you, for everybody. Yeah. She will never be relationship material because she can't wrap her head around the fact that you just broke up your relationship, marriage, whatever, for her, and that was 10 years, 50, however long that was. And now you're in this two-minute microwave before relationship, and what, it's going to last the test of time? What movie are we watching? Like, yeah. you know. Okay, I got one. I got one. So, okay, what we've established that it's not a great idea to have a relationship with somebody you work with. We get that, right? I know. Okay. <laughs> so you see too much that You do. You yeah. do. So now that goes without saying. Don't have a side piece in the no, workplace. No. no. Why not shock? What? 
Several reasons. <laughs> several. <laughs> Why would you? Yes. Okay, cheating is not okay. We're not condoning yeah, yeah, that yeah. at yeah. all. We are not condoning yeah. cheating. Yeah. Yeah. We're just, you know, bringing up the topics of having a side piece. So if you do have a side piece, shame on you. That's <laughs> fair. <laughs> so, yeah, fair. We got to put that disclaimer we out. We understand that Gage's Side I'm sure y'all edit me out. So it's okay. <laughs> oh no, we're definitely we're keeping all this in here because uh, this is a true statement. We all yeah. act like we're we're pro we're pro side chicks or pro Mary. Yeah. We're, no, we're just. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm, 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 wait, we didn't even establish this oh, to start it. Let's not all grow consciences now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we ever said anything about personally what our yeah. personal philosophies on this. I'm just, actually pro mistresses. Yeah, we were yeah, we were discussing that. Know your role. Just so you know. Like that's the that's what. I mean, I mean, he's the Gage is like ah, no. Gage is like ah, I see, I see the perks now. Like I might have seen the light. No, no. So I okay. So let's establish this. It boils down to <laughs> several things. Respect being one of them. We have talked about this over and over again, and we've said this back and forth. This is it? And maybe I'm wrong for saying this. Maybe I'm right. We'll see. Men are not the smartest people when it comes to these types of situations. We look at a woman, walk past us, and the first thing we think is what we would do to them if they gave us a shot. I'm pretty sure, and that's not all men, obviously. I think most. Most. I think women, uh, when a man of a, a handsome man walks by, does not first think, I'm going to jump his bones, and that's all. No, She's thinking about a lot. A certain type of female that does. Just like there's a certain kind of man that will just look up and be like, mm, where's her husband at? <laughs> like, where's the old man at? There's, a, there's kudos to these men that can think all the way through, you know. But, like, I, I ain't going to lie. When I'm out there, I'm... I'm a dog chasing cars, yeah. man. I wouldn't know what to do if I actually caught yeah. one. Yeah. 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 Well, you just had some chick tell you how much she wanted to jump you. So. I don't know what she's talking about. Oh, wait a minute. I wasn't there. I was at a family bar. Oh, yeah. I, just, I didn't see anything. I don't know what this, the shape is. They exist. They exist. They exist. Yes. But what we're talking about, all this side piece, everything, it's all about what are you looking for in life? And do you have the time to take care of most men think that a threesome is their ultimate fantasy, but I don't think they think of how much work it takes to actually please and enjoy two women. To me, it's an overrated experience. I'd rather give all my like I get yeah, like I, I ain't gonna lie. I, never mind. Too much too much information about me. But like <laughs> just saying, I'd rather give all my time to one person. Yes. And if I can impress one person, I, I feel like I've won the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's the thing. I, I we we are just. This is the topic sitting here having coffee this morning that we're talking about. <laughs> Nobody's in here like, yo, I'm trying to bag three side pieces before Christmas. Like, it's not a thing. It's not a thing. Just so we're clear. Oh, we're talking about, like, the different roles between, uh, like, a man and wo uh, like a man and woman. Hey, is it easier for a man to have side chicks? Or is it easier for a woman to have side men or side dudes? Or, I don't know, that. I say easier for a woman. And that's not, listen, we're not, not, we're not trying to say that women women are smarter in this situation in this realm that we're dealing with now i'm not saying women are not smart overall but definitely in this realm we're talking about they just know how to multitask and handle things better men are idiots we stumble we fumble and not all men some are really to make time for yeah, one woman yeah exactly but you're making enough for two and you're 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 actually giving your emotions and your and you, some, you're gonna mess up you're gonna slip up yeah but ninety percent of men's mistakes in life is all trial and error. Mm -hmm. Like we could see somebody getting hit by a bus, absolutely. But I bet we'll walk in front of one anyway. <laughs> like it's, it's kind of a guaranteed thing. Like we can learn from other people's mistakes because it's funny at the time. Like we we love nagging on somebody and be like, I don't know why the hell would he ever do that? That was dumb. But honestly, I'm just kind of glad it was him, not me. Like I'm glad that he made that mistake first, so I know not to do so it. Now I know not to step in that. Yeah. yeah. We're, I feel like women kind of have like more control whether it's a what kind of relationship it is with a man unless the man is in the married position. Honestly, I think it's I think it's different. I think it's different. And you and I have discussed it with a mutual friend of ours that like women have control over we've discussed this. Women have control over who they can sleep with. They can go out and we've discussed this. You can go uh, 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 Lily Lavender can walk out on the sidewalk right now pick up whatever man she wants within a 10 mile radius. Have no problem doing that. Where Whereas 
us, we would have to walk out. We'd actually have to throw some game, be suave, you know, and then and, and hope that nobody else has got better better quips yeah, than I do. Yeah, yeah. and like, I oh, oh, here we go. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, he's got pretty good swag. I don't even know how to compete. Like, I keep trying to steal his moves, and it ain't working. We're different. We bring different things to the table. Now, like I said, it depends on the one. Again, it's 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 a case case bed. We're talking about the woman now. If I meet a woman on a pier and she's pouring drinks, and I got a San Diego jersey on per se, and she sees that, and she's got a bolt tattoo running up her side and she lifts up her shirt to show me that the next man can't come and be mad at me because he didn't get the drum or he didn't get the 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 tattoo shirt. why is he a chargers fan he's not even a chargers fan i'm not even a chargers fan but i got a chargers jersey on and little mama is a chargers fan herself so, so you a fan tonight hey she showed me the bolt yeah, but uh, so that that's what we were discussing though is uh, uh me uh, lily lavender and i've talked about it at length that women have control over who they can sleep with they get pick of the they get pick of the litter but as far as like a relationship that's up to the man like if yeah. he does like he can set and we were talking about that with setting boundaries like i can choose who i want to be with because of the boundaries i set yeah. i can tell what kind of person you are and if you're willing to accommodate me and respect me and my time is valuable i can choose to be in a relationship with you or not but, keyword uh, man. man keyword man yeah yeah okay so that, that's where that's where men are kind of dropping the ball in the younger generations. They're not setting these boundaries. They're willing to bend over backwards for just one random one random girl that there. And I hate to say this, well, Lil Evans is still there, but like there's, we're as women and men, we're men are outnumbered three to one. Easy, like easy, yeah, easy. like that's a, that's a specific stat. Three to one, mm -hmm. there are more women than men. Mm -hmm. So the theoretically, if we're all out here and like now that there's like gay dudes coming out of the work, work no offense to anybody out there, we should have hard pick the litter as far as women go. They're allowed to pick who they're allowed to fool around yeah, with. Yeah. But that's we set our boundaries and all that stuff. We get to pick who, what kind of relationship we want to be in. We built a life. Yeah, it is because you know. I mean, we're building a big foundation of everything, and you know. House, home, security, and stuff like that. And then so, uh, like, to advice and word to the wise to the younger generation of men out there, you, if you set these boundaries, not only I feel like that's a flex. Like, if you set boundaries in a relationship, you'd be like, listen, I'm not changing for anybody. If you want to be a part of my life, you can be a part of it. But this is what my life is all going to be about. I'm not changing for anybody. I think that's a flex. But you got to be willing to grow with somebody, though. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you are taking it to that, mm. you know, next level and stuff. Yeah. Well, and there's nothing, uh, yeah, grow, uh, have experiences, go out and try. Yeah. To, giving up you. But don't, uh, yeah, but don't give up yourself in the in the works. You don't have to because there is somebody else out there that's willing to understand where you're coming from on that. Okay, I'm going to say something, and this won't go over y'all heads. Hear me. Uh -huh. Boys, girls, pick. Women and men choose. That that's it. Yeah. Young people pick, grown people choose. And if you understand what that means, it, it's it's about maturity, it's about respect. It's all of that rolled into one. When you're young, you just you're just here for the pick. It's like they call it pick a litter. When you're an older person and you're choosing your lifestyle, you're choosing the person you choose to be with. You're choosing. These are choices in life. That you can deal with that, and you weigh the consequences and all of that, and that's the difference. When you're young, you just pick, ah, oh, whatever. I'll just pick that one. You're just pointing to something on the wall because you're in that. Exactly. I'm gonna put that on. I'm gonna put that on a t-shirt. Exactly. <laughs> Quote of the year, man. Hey, man. Because you're bringing a whole nother lifestyle. I got, I got fifty of them. We, yes. we can we can start a t-shirt line with the quotes. I got you. Hey, man. And our lifestyle now is extremely jam-packed. Of course. Like, None of us have time for people. Look, we're not, we're not, we're not. Yeah, a some, little bit. We're not. <laughs> I got a little bit. <laughs> we're not. He said, if you're, if anybody's out there looking, he just got some spare time. Yeah. He's, he'll fit you into his busy schedule. <laughs> we're not, we're not homeless people or nor are we CEOs. We don't have time like some of those people do to do things like that. We have time to do this, do that and go back to work. Well, and at the same time, like the things that I've worked very, very hard for, I don't give away lightly. No. Like I've earned that. And, that, and that's something about like that's the, the, thing. the yeah. younger generations like don't quite understand. Because they haven't earned anything. Yeah, they don't know what it's like to earn and like really, really um, be excited about something mm. they put blood, Hell, sweat, and tears into. figure out how to earn my time. Yeah. Plain yeah. and simple. Yeah, mm. I heard that. I heard, yeah, yeah, that's it. That's, that's like it. What you yeah. were saying. Yeah. Like, that's it. Just to simplify, I mean, I, I did carpentry and framing, for, you know, for a few years, and I loved it. And like, the more I learned, 
the more I'd need a new tool or something. Mm -hmm. And that new tool was like just, you know, like a Christmas present. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I'm learning a new skill. I need this new tool. Like, mm -hmm. just an expansion of my later life to come. Like, I don't know. No, that's it. I, fi I figured something out just now. So, being a bartender, being a server, running a food truck, majority of your free time is spent networking. 100%. We are going out from place to place. We make friends anywhere we go because majority of it is networking. We're trying to get people to come to our place of yeah, work right. yeah. or encounter them somewhere else or opening up possibilities for another place to work. Right. You know, that that's... Well, no, and in that way, you're always building your resume, too. So, mm -hmm. like, if I build relationships at this bar, they already see that I'm a good guy or a good woman and, like, and, and enjoy my time there then they can count on me to be enjoyable at their establishment. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're always you're always improving your resume by the, by the places you work because nobody gets a good bartender. Well, I say nobody, but you don't get good bartenders in certain locations because of their of their resume on paperwork. Yeah. It's it's usually word of mouth. Yeah. yeah, like people people know you and you had a good connection they're like, "Oh yeah, that dude was awesome." Yeah, you, you know, like I, I, yeah. Yes. Like I don't That's know if you in the time also oh. so that you know regulars come back they're like, "Oh, you were here last time." We had a great time yeah. with you. And then, boom, that just, you know, they tell friends, and then they just, hey, we had a great... They come back, and they have a different bartender. They're like, oh, we love that last bartender. Our experience here was so fun. Man. So, and uh, I've definitely had people... We, <laughs> we have a mutual friend that looks similar to me. <laughs> oh, God. Like, yes. So, yeah, and... Uh, and uh, he got mad the other day. So like I'm, I'm almost covered in tattoos. Like that's uh, like if you know me, you've seen them. It's great. It's my favorite thing. Like I love my tattoos. He has none whatsoever. <laughs> but they, he got sat a table and uh, and I, I serve every so often and I bartend on the other times. But he had got a table. And they were so excited. They saw him thinking he was me. And they were like, oh, I haven't seen you forever or whatever. And he's like, he's like, wait, like, do you have tattoos? And he, like, looked, and his shoulders just dropped. And he was like, nah, man, he's bartending today. He's like, you can go sit at the bar if you want. <laughs> Wrong person. Wrong person. So, like, oh, he's like, yeah, he's like, I'm sick of people, like, thinking that we look alike. But people, people say that I look just like him, too, and it's awful. Yeah, it's awful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. His pickup game is awful. About mine? His. Oh, word. <laughs> Give him a few shots. Yeah. Yeah, he's you know he's a rising star. A little bit of liquid <laughs> courage will change the way a lot of people. Uh, he work. actually pulled a fast on a fast one on me one time. We were we were both at a, at a local bar and we were hanging out and uh, I left him with a crowd because I seen his blonde across the bar <laughs> and uh, I ain't gonna lie. I saw her from across the bar. I smiled at her real quick. She smiled back. I winked at her and she flagged me over. Done. Done. Had a blast. <laughs> I was talking to her for maybe like maybe 30, 45 minutes. We were having a good time and we were playing around. And this guy and my buddy comes up after he'd had a few shots and sat down right in front of us. And he looked at me, smiled real big and looked at her and he was like, how you doing, baby? I was like, dang. I was like, you're just going to weasel right in here, huh? Yeah, he's yeah, yeah. I was like, all right. Which, I mean, he start, she started cracking up. I had already, I'd already put in the work. Yeah. But I looked at her and I was like, I was like, all right, babe, let's go dance. I will, I will take this. I win. <laughs> Oh, man. So, yeah, that's weird. I, I, now that I think about it, we're kind of mean to each other <laughs> quite a bit. <laughs> no, we kind of broke it down a little bit. Yeah, it was, I, I like it. Yeah, been, been friends for years now, decades yeah, exactly. even. Yeah, I think that's funny how that works. <laughs> But guys, thank you so much for coming out and thank you for listening to us. We're going to go over our cocktail today, which is going to be the Malibu Mistress. Malibu Mistress is a cocktail made with Midori or a melon liqueur, and it's also made with coconut rum and Malibu or Malibu rum. You're going to top it off, and you're going to use Sprite. Is that right? You're going to use. You're going to make it with the three ingredients. It's going to be. It's going to be an ounce and a half of both liquors. Topped off with Sprite and whipped cream and a cherry on top. And that's the Malibu Mistress. Be careful with that. There's a lot, a lot of sugar, a lot, big, big, big hangover if you're not careful. But guys, we love you, and please tune in for the next one on Bar Ships and Bullshit.